Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. Today's topic is going to be learning to say no. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. So learning to say no, what this means, it's, it's a very fundamental thing to, to, learn, to learn and to understand and to practice in life. Many people here on the channel, myself included, until recently, had a difficult time saying no because perhaps we were a people pleaser or we were a yes person or we did not want to let people down and we didn't want to say no because we would feel guilty. And when we did this, we were, we were always putting other people in front of ourselves in virtually every relationship, not just the narcissistic relationship, but everybody because we didn't have boundaries and we didn't know how to say no to, to, to things. In other words, we also believe this, if we could do it, why wouldn't we do it? Because we had the ability to do it, so we should always say yes to people and not say no. And this is, is the same thing in the workplace with romantic relationships, with friendships, with siblings, with everybody. We just didn't know how to say no. And many people still don't know how to utilize the one word sentence, which is no. Remember, when you say no to something, you're saying yes to yourself. No is a boundary. No is a one word complete sentence. No is powerful. No is actually putting yourself first and foremost and understanding that yes, you do need to have boundaries put in place and they will only be put in place by you. No one ever can put a boundary in place for you. It's you. You either say yes or you say no. Now, when you were in the narcissistic relationship, I am certain you did not utilize the one word sentence, no. Because if you did, you would be gaslit, you would be stonewalled, you would experience rage fits, you would be the litany of definitions involving narcissism you would experience, put it that way. Maybe you get the silent treatment for days on end, who knows. But it's after you come through the narcissistic relationship and you've healed and or well on the healing path, you understand that no is a massive word and that many people have already understood the power of the word no. Certainly the narcissist knows what the word no is and that's exactly one of the ways they manipulated us by breaking boundaries, by crushing us, for, have, for having us continue to work and spin around on that hamster wheel working for the relationship. Keep in mind this was all before we knew what narcissism was. We now know we're becoming educated each and every day. We're certainly becoming awakened and aware. And no, learning to say no is a powerful tool that many people sincerely do know how to use. It's the empaths or the people that are still people pleasers or are yes people. They don't understand the power of this word no. A couple things I want to mention and really clarify for you is if you do say no to anything, it's not a bad thing. What it's doing is it's setting a boundary in place for you to benefit you. It's letting the other individual or individuals understand that your time is more valuable doing something else or being elsewhere than it is helping them out. It's that simple. So many people, myself, and I used to be included in this category, would feel guilty for saying no because you had the power, you had the ability to help people, why wouldn't you do it? But post-narcissistic relationship, you understand that not everybody has your best interest at heart. Many people are takers, they have hidden agendas, they want you to be working for them, not, not exclusively narcissists, just people in general. You don't have to be a narcissist to try and take advantage of other people, certainly not. Having said these things, when you say no to somebody, like let's pretend it's summertime in the States now, and your neighbor's always borrowing the lawnmower, and he's been, he or she's been doing it for years, but this year, you're gonna tell them no. But because you just know they're gonna borrow the lawnmower, or, <coughs> excuse me, or gardening tools, whatever it is. You don't say no and like bite their head off. You just politely say, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it, I'll be using it this weekend, or whatever. And that's it. Actually, you don't need to explain anything. No is a complete sentence. But that's an example, and then the more you do this, and the more you say no, and by the way, you're not being mean, you're just putting a boundary in place. They can get their own tools, they can cut their own grass, things like that. But when you do that, they're less apt to be asking you for these tools and or lawnmower in the future, because you've already turned them down once or twice, and that's exactly how it works. You see, it works inversely in both capacities. If you continue to say yes to people, then they will always be asking you, because they're accustomed to you replying yes. When you flip the script and take charge and take control over the narrative and you say no, then they're like, whoa, I can't get to this one anymore. I'll just ask somebody else and try and gobble up their time and consume their energy. I hope you understand that. You don't feel guilty about saying no, but saying, saying no takes practice and it takes commitment. And remember, you don't have to explain anything. You just say no. It's just, I can't do it. Sorry. 
And when, when you understand this, you will see that your energy is more free and you have much more free time and you are concerned about yourself, which is the priority. Keep in mind, when you say yes to someone else, like, if, like using that lawnmower example, if, if people are, that, that person's always asking you to borrow the tools or whatever it is and you say yes, well then you have to get the tools, give it to them, hope they're returned on time, hope they're not broken. You wanna maintain the relationship, all that. No, 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 no. We've now learned through the narcissistic abusive cycle that we care about ourselves. We insulate ourselves, we protect ourselves, we help others when we can, when our cup is full, that's what we do. But when we, when we say no, then we're not concerned about those tools. We're not concerned the condition they're returned in or when they're returned because it doesn't matter because we didn't say yes, we said no. It's the same thing in the workplace. You're working, your coworker or boss, whoever it is, whether they're a narcissist or not, doesn't matter. The point is, people are always accustomed to you going above and beyond the call of duty, yet you haven't had a pay raise in four years and you're still getting the same pay that you were before. And they just give you mountains and mountains of work, why? Because they know you won't say no. And they also know you will accomplish these tasks and you will save the company money while the boss goes on their trips to Tahiti and everything and you're stuck in the office doing the work of three people. I'm suggesting say no. Set a boundary. No, I can't do it. Sorry, I'm busy. Uh, I've fulfilled my workload for this week and month and year and we both know I haven't had a pay raise in four years so no, I'm not gonna do the work of the other three people. They can do it themselves. And believe me when I say it, I'm not suggesting to lose your job or anything. I'm just saying put a boundary in place. Use it as a bargaining chip or a bargaining tool to get more pay or to get a longer vacation or to get benefits of work from home, whatever it is. But these things benefit you. Another thing is when you say no to people, they're looking at you in a different light. They're saying to themselves, wow, this one actually has a backbone. This one is actually standing up for themselves. This one actually knows their worth now. Unbelievable. Wow, I'm gonna have to ask someone else who maybe doesn't know their worth or doesn't know their value or more importantly, who won't say no to me. You see, no is a complete sentence, it's powerful. And like I mentioned previously on the video, many people do know how to utilize it. Certainly, the narcissist knows that because they just flat out do whatever they want to. And remember, they blow up relationships, families, marriages, businesses, whatever, they don't care. But that's not what we do. We will use no to benefit ourselves in a kind, loving, polite manner. That's what we do. No explanation needed. No destruction of relationships needed. Just it's a boundary, which is a whole different video. But when you do utilize the word no, you're putting a boundary in place. And yes, it will be difficult at first because you're not accustomed to saying this word. But the sooner you, you utilize this word no, the stronger you will become, the more energy you'll have to put into yourself, the more time you'll have for yourself, the less you'll be concerned about other people, and the more fortitude and resilience and, and beautiful glow you will have. What that means is you'll have your freedom back. You don't have to worry about pe people pleasing any longer. You just don't have to do it. We did that in the narcissistic relationship. We've done that virtually all of our lives. Now we are the priority. We come first, second, and third. And if people can accept it, then great. We maintain the, the, the relationship with them, the friendship, the business relationship, whatever it is. If they have an issue with it, then think about it. Were they really meant to be in your life any longer anyway? They weren't. Because you put up a boundary, maybe they dissolve the relationship. No problem. That just clearly illustrates that they were in the relationship for one reason banking on you always saying yes. So you see, when you say no, it, also, it will also weed out non-healthy relationships. Not only toxic relationships, but just non-healthy relationships. And like I mentioned on the channel, virtually every day, the relationships that you are in, post-narcissistic relationship, because that's most likely why you're on the channel, they need to be reciprocal. They need to benefit you and the other person. And it needs to be a two-way street. Because in the toxic narcissistic relationship, the relationship was anything but a two-way street. It was a one-way street to Destructionsville. It was a one-way street that had you working for the narcissist. We don't do that any longer. Another thing I mentioned on the channel frequently, which I will, will reiterate right now, is you now have the wisdom. You now have the experience, the insight. You now can compare your narcissistic relationship experiences with the definitions, the glossary of terms. And this is your new superpower. You need to utilize it, if not now, when? You see, you're given a gift. You may not have seen it when you were discarded or when the relationship ended, I certainly didn't, but now it's a superpower, it's a gift. You can now discern if the people are good, if they're bad, if they fit in your life or not. And you don't really care if they do or don't. Because like, like I mentioned in the channel frequently, there are eight billion people on this planet. We were attached and stuck in that narcissistic toxic relationship for a period of time. We've now moved forward. We don't really care who's in our life if, it, if they're not benefiting us. 
So yes, that's exactly the path. And bear in mind also, when the toxic narcissistic relationship ended and the smear campaign was underway, you found out pretty quickly who, who had your back and who was your friend. Remember those days? Exactly. So this is just another layer. It's the next step in the evolution of acquiring the knowledge, which is your superpower. And what it means is, when you learn to have this boundary and say the word no to simple things, to anything that you don't want to do, that means you're saying yes to yourself and you will automatically weed out people that don't have your best interest at heart. It's just the way it works. It's always worked that way. So consider this message. Learning how to say no, it's a powerful thing. It will take practice, but you will utilize it. It is the next step in the progress on the healing path. It sincerely is. And take baby steps with it. Utilize it. Don't feel guilty. Don't explain yourself. Just no. Thank you, but no. Remember when you were in the narcissistic relationship, or even before then, how easy it was to say yes to, to virtually everybody because you were a people pleaser or you were, a yes, you were a yes person? Remember those days? Now you're just flipping the script. You're using the opposite word, which is no. You're now putting a boundary in place, which you didn't have before and you're protecting and insulating yourself, spending your time wiser and investing in yourself. It's beautiful. I really hope you get this message. Guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay blessed, stay true, stay on the path. Learn how to say no, learn how to not apologize, learn how to not feel guilty, learn how to have boundaries, and learn how to become the best version of yourself possible. I love you no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Continue on the path moving forward each and every day. God bless you. I will talk to you tomorrow. And remember, no is a complete sentence. I love you. Bye.